Howdy, Stephen Rosell here, Senior Technical Specialist with Autodesk, focusing on Maya. And I'm going to cover a couple of tools for bonus tools, uh, which were included in the new uh, installer for Maya 2016 Extension 2. So with the extension, with Extension 2, we have uh, released a new version of bonus tools, in part because there was an API break, so we were forced to basically recompile plugins and create new installers. Uh, but also, we decided to go ahead and add a couple of new features while we're at it. So under bonus tools, modeling, we have two new features, uh, three technically, curve to ribbon, curve to tube, and then a cleanup tool, which I'll talk about in a second. But basically what these are, are simple tools for allowing you to convert a curve into a mesh. So um, this is, or these are a couple of examples here that just show you kind of the end result. So I've got, you know, these different shapes. The ones on the left are created as tubes. The ones on the right are created as ribbons or cards, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and these were created with a simple button click. Now, if you've ever tried to do this in Maya, uh, you, you may know that by default, uh, out of the box, it is not a single button click. So with bonus tools, we've tried to just simplify the whole process to mimic uh, you know, some tools that you have in other applications like 3ds Max, uh, where it's very easy. So let me just kind of go over how you would do it by default so that I can compare how you do it with the new bonus tool. So here I've got the three curves that I used to create those three different shapes, and these are all NURBS, standard NURBS curves, nothing fancy here. Um, in Maya, there are a number of surface tools. If you go into the modeling menu set, we have a whole list of surface tools that are used for essentially uh, taking NURBS curves and generating surfaces, which can then also be converted into polygons. However, uh, they are kind of cumbersome to do some more basic things. So for instance, if I just wanted to take these and turn them into ribbons, uh, I would use something like the extrude tool. And in the options, I've got a variety of settings here, one of which basically allows me just to do a distance-based extrude and just push a button and bam, I get some ribbons, which looks OK. Uh, the problem is there's not a lot of control. If we bring up a manipulator, I have control over the width of these. And then I've got these other controls that allow me to control things like the, the rotation and things like the sweep and all of this, but they don't quite give me the result that I want. So really what I want are some basic controls over things like the thickness, maybe the taper, and so on. The other thing is this does not allow you to do any kind of tube or any kind of closed surface. So if I wanted to do a tube, we have an option here under extrude. And the other thing to point out, by the way, is that output by default is NURBS. Typically, you know, 90% of the time, you're probably going to want to generate polygons, so you can turn that on, um, which I'll talk about in a second as well. But let's say that I want to create some tubes. Now, in order to do that, I have to actually create what's called a profile curve. So that would require me to go in and create something, for instance, like a circle. So now I can take that circle, and then I can shift select my path, and then I can say create a tube from that. and this is where the frustration begins. By default, you're going to get a really weird result. And what's happening here is there are a lot of options that control how the tube gets created, as well as how the tube gets tessellated. But you don't typically want to do it on the front end because it's very cumbersome. Usually, you want to just close this. And after the fact, just go to the channel box and just work with the history. So first things first, I can see that right now it's aligning with the circle. So I have to kind of figure out what's going on. Is it? Uh, using the component closest end of path component pivot, I don't know. So I just try these different settings until I see what I get. OK, that looks different, but not quite right. Uh, so let's say I want to set fixed path to be on instead of off. OK, that's looking a little bit closer, but it's still not right. So now I say, OK, well, I want to change my different options. And there, after a couple of tries of doing this, I can start to get what I want. So that's actually giving me flat. So I do want use profile normal on. And now that looks like a tube. That's fine. Um, but it took me several tries to get it. And I'm an advanced user. So imagine a, a novice user trying to figure this out. Not easy. The other thing is the NURBS tessellate uh, settings, uh, which by default give you triangles. So you probably want to make quads. And then you don't necessarily want to have such a density, so you start tweaking these values and you realize quickly that they're not doing anything, so then you have to change the mode. Uh, so I want to switch this to be, oh, actually not fit. I want to switch it to be general. Uh, and then I want to go in and set this to be 3D subdivisions. And then I have to go in and add the subdivisions along each 
direction and pretty soon you can start to get something that more or less looks like what you want. But again, as an advanced user, even I, after all these years, have a hard time remembering exactly how to set this without uh, redoing it every time. And now if I wanted to go back and reapply this, I have to start all over again, of course, unless I remembered exactly what I did the next time I extrude, I have the same problem. So the point to all that is just to illustrate um, kind of the complexities of the existing tools. People have had a lot of frustrations. Um, so we created a simple option to basically bypass all that and just simply select the curves that you want to create tubes or ribbons for under bonus tools, under modeling. We now have two simple tools. I'll just show you both. Uh, take these and I can create a ribbon. That's going to give me a flat uh, surface that follows the path. And then it's going to give me, we'll just put this over here for now. And then it's going to give me controls at a high level on the node itself, which allow me to control simple things like the width or like the orientation, or I can spin this around the length, or I can go in and I can add something like a twist where I'm actually creating a, a spin along the length, or I can add something like a taper, all the basic stuff that you would want to do with an extrusion. And then of course I can go in and I can add things like uh, divisions along the width uh, or the length. Uh, as I add divisions, I've also got a curvature option where I can go and add curvature pushing outward, or I can add curvature pushing, pushing inward. Um, again, straightforward, the kind of stuff that you would typically do uh, as when you're creating uh, tubes or, or ribbons. Likewise, we have the tube option, which does the same thing, except it just creates a closed surface, but it's the same parameters otherwise. So you have length parameters, you have width parameters, you also have, or rather divisions, you have the, the full width, you have the orientation, which gives you spinning or twisting, you have tapering, whoa, that's a little extreme, you have tapering down to a point or ballooning out, uh, and then you have a, a kind of a spin or a twist if you want to create like a horn type effect. So it's very, very straightforward. Under the hood, it's doing everything that I showed you before. It's just using the standard Maya nodes, but it's exposing all the controls at a high level uh, that allow you to kind of simplify the creation process. Now, another thing it allows you to do is, uh, let's turn the, the, the twist off. Uh, you'll notice that uh, right now I'm getting even subdivisions. Let's say that I wanted to actually create uh, non-uniform, which will actually look at the shape of the curve. That will give me density where I have more control vertices and it'll give me sparseness where I have less control vertices. So that's one of those things that was hard to do as well. Now you can combine this. So I can actually say, I wanna create a tube here and then I wanna create a ribbon here and then I wanna create another tube here. And then this tube, I want it to be say, for instance, really thick. And then this tube right here, I want it to be uh, really thin. So you can basically work with these kind of individually and then I can go in and you know dial up divisions. I can add smoothness obviously if I want to kind of make that look a little nicer. Uh, same thing here. I can go in and add width. But then let's say I wanted to add a taper to each one of these at the same time. Uh, by exposing all their attributes at a high level you can actually go in and you can add things like taper uh, all at the same time without having to, to deal with each of these individually. So I could add taper or I could add something like the orientation or the twist or or anything really. I could set any of these parameters um, either in unison or individually to one at a time. Now in order to do this, oh, and then the other thing to point out is if the curves change, uh, there is a constraint system set up so that if the curves change either positionally or with orientation, or if I were to go in and say, for instance, grab the control vertice of the curve, that's going to allow me to go in and actually change the underlying shape of the object. And that works, again, individually with, with any one of these. So I could grab the point here and I could you know, change the direction of that tube, or I could go in and grab this and make it you know, kind of more of an elbow and so on. So again, uh, it's pretty flexible. Um, and there's a lot of stuff happening under the hood that a typical modeler just doesn't care about. It does create some construction history. So if you take a look over here, uh, it does create um, some underlying construction history with profile curves and uh, with geometry constraints or, or transform constraints. So that's where this companion tool comes in. So if you go to modeling, um, you'll notice all these extra attributes get added. Like I said, it uses constraints to keep the meshes attached to the curves. Once you're done modeling, there's a cleanup here, which is essentially a, an advanced delete history where you just say clean up tube, and that will basically get rid of all the connections. So now I can actually 
get rid of you know all this extra stuff and now i just have my geometry i have no construction history i have no extra attributes uh no constraints or anything crazy like that it's just a regular regular old mesh so hopefully people will find that useful i uh would encourage you to go to the Autodesk Exchange and download the latest version of the installer so that you can get the updates. All right, thanks for your time. Bye.